Today's Baldur's Gate 3 video guide is all about how to conquer Act 1 with an overpowered fighter. Now, I will say that this is a three-part guide because the second part will transition into what I like to call a Radiant Evasion Tank. It becomes an unhittable monster that deals insane damage in Act 2, and then in Act 3, we will get weapons that make us deal insanely high damage per turn while being completely unhittable by everything in the game. But, this being part 1 of 3, we're simply going to cover the items that are available to our fighter, which uh, in Act 1, I recommend you just use Lazel for a very specific reason. She has synergies with some insanely powerful gear that you can get very early on, and she will carry you completely through Act 1 on her shoulders. So once you unlock Withers, you will respec her because her base stats are stupid and bogus, and it's just better to respec her, so... Here is what I want you to put points into. 16 strength with the plus 2, dexterity 14, constitution 12. You can swap constitution and wisdom early on if you're on honor mode. It doesn't help much. But the reason we go 16 into wisdom is because most enemies in Act 1 will have status abnormality spells uh, that'll just mess up your character and their wisdom saves. And so you just want more wisdom so you don't get screwed up in combat. You will be immune to sleep and charm, as I'll explain later, but there are other things that can just throw your character out of whack, and having high wisdom prevents that. Also, Lazel's not your talking main character. If you're playing her as a main character, obviously you'd want charisma, but we have other characters for that, and I'll talk about that later as well. But for now, you're going to also change her skill proficiencies to perception and survival, and the reason being is that it just makes it easier to find those diggy holes and it's easier to find those hidden switches on walls and stuff like that if you have more characters that are good at perception and survival. Acrobatics has the least amount of skill checks in the entire game and she won't be making those. There's no reason to really have this. Um, and yeah, you could use her as a shover at one point when you get a certain boot, but it you don't need it. It's kind of a waste of an action to be real, to be honest. And... Uh, as far as leveling the fighter goes, I'll just do this uh, together on screen here. You want to keep her as a fighter, and then as she levels up, you want to unlock Battle Master. So here we go, level 2 bonus action. And um, again, we're going to go to Battle Master as... Let me make sure it's good on the screen here. Battle Master, you want to have this, and then for maneuvers, you want a disarming attack. This is super important. This is also how we get a weapon later on. Repost and tripping attack. These are the three that you want. Very, very, very useful. Level four, you get another feat here. You wanna go with Savage Attacker. Savage, the reason you want Savage Attacker is because uh, you want her to be able to one-shot certain enemies early on. So this is just ideal. Next up, at, and again, this guide will cover up to level seven because it's act one. That's as far as we're going. Level five, we get the bonus extra. We get the extra attack, not the, um, <laughs> the heart one. All right, level six is the next feat, and we're going great weapon master, so this is amazing. This is when we truly start one-shotting everybody. Because you have plus 10 damage uh, with your attack rolls, but you do take a minus five to your attack penalty. I'm sorry, plus 10 to damage rolls. And then uh, if you get a crit or you get a kill, you get a bonus action. So it's just, it's nutty. Like, your Lazelle, when hasted or bloodlusted, will just run around and kill everything in Act 1. It's so cool. Now, at level 7, you get two other maneuvers, and you're going to go with uh, pushing attack, or push attack, whatever it's called, and then you're going to go with uh, evasive footwork. And that's mostly for Act 2 stuff, but that's what we're taking. And yes, I'm aware of my text here was off screen but hey there you go that's the leveling process now before we go over items i just want to go over elixir buffs in my opinion elixir of heroism is best in slot choice for her you may be thinking but i have a cleric that can bless i don't need 10 hit points i don't need her to have the 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and the so the thing about that is that heroism elixir stacks alongside or other sources of bless stacks with the elixir. So, 
I have a healer who blesses people when he heals them, so if I just chunk a potion at Lazelle, and she might move out of the way there. Naughty, naughty Lazelle. We'll, uh, we'll just cast a heal spell instead. We'll just cast a little basic heal spell, and that's going to give her bless for two turns, as my healer is, you know, coded that way. Not coded, it's built that way. But now we have bless, uh, the buff bless, we also have the heroism bless, and you, this just gives her more higher percent chance to hit enemy targets, which will increase your DPS more than, say, the Elixir of Cloud Giant Strength, which I'll, I'll show you now the difference. I'll go ahead and show you the DPS difference. This is level 7, Act 1, and what I'm going to do with my Cleric is summon a zombie to be used as a target dummy. And then here's Lazelle currently with 16 Strength, so her swings hit pretty darn hard. That's 25 plus 6. That's 27 plus 6, so she's hitting pretty, pretty darn pretty strong here. And then, oh, she's got one in her inventory. We'll go ahead and just chug that. There it is, the Elixir of Cloud Giant Strength. You can get these as soon as you hit level 6. I have a whole video about that. I'll show off later. And now with 27 strength, yeah, she's going to hit like a monster. She won't hit as often, though. Now, of course, against the, the zombie here, she will, you know, be able to still hit it. But uh, there we go. That's a 33 plus 6. It's not much of a DPS increase. 30 plus 4. So you can see, while it is a higher number, it's not that much higher of a number. So again, we'll chop up another zombie here. We got 29 plus 5, and then the 32 plus 6. So, uh, heroism, clearly superior, and you could say, well, what about the, the Colossus? You don't need advantage on strength checks. She's already strong. She's a Yankee. It's you just don't need it. It's just fun to have if you need to throw a really heavy character. That's, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's go over items. Also, if you are wondering, we will be replacing Lazel in Act 2 with Minthara. Minthara is vastly superior for, for DPS. But if you really like Lazel, just storyline-wise, you can take a small DPS loss and functionality loss where you have a self-heal mechanic. That'll be explained in the Act 2 video that's coming out. You can still go with Lazelle. It's not... She's not that much worse, but technically, statistically, she is the worst choice over Minthara for this build. So these are the items I'm going to show you how to get for the rest of the video. For everyone that is experienced at this game, that knows where this stuff is located or how to get this stuff, you're done. That's the build. You can close the video. Mwah. Thank you so much for watching. But for everyone else including a future version of myself that will forget all this stuff, I'm going to show you how to get all of these items. And you want to grab them all. We won't be using all of them right away because Lazel is just a monster. She only needs a few items to really function. But these items will be used later in Act 2 to finalize the build and become an absolute beast. Let's get into it. The very first item is the Silver Sword of the Astral Plane, which is right here. You can see it's a absolute beast. It gives you bonuses to your psychic damage if you're Gith Yankee. You can't be charmed. You have advantage on int, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. That's why we, again, why we have 16 wisdom. Plus advantage, you're never getting status, like, debuffed, okay? It is just an absolute whopper of a weapon. Now, unfortunately, this is a very technically complex weapon to get. So what I have to do is I have to show you uh, this video. I'm not going to play it on this video. That'd be weird. So what you need to do is in all of my descriptions for all of my Baldur's Gate 3 vids, you just scroll down, you click the description here, and then you scroll down and it, the sword should be under tips and tricks, which would be, um, let's see, it's here somewhere. I know it is, but um, dang it, where is it? Where are you at? How to get the best great sword. So click that link. It'll bring you right here to this video. And it's titled, How to Get Lazel's Ultimate Weapon in Act 1 at Level 3. And this is the best method, the best and quickest and easiest way to get this. I know you might be some experienced Redditor that uh, thinks that he's a know-it-all. Oh, use command drop. No, that's stupid. That's a low percent chance to succeed. This video will teach you the real 88% chance to get the weapon. The, the fast and easy and the simple way. Again, it's only 8 minutes long. Just watch it on 2x if you're impatient, you little zoomer. Next up are two other items. There is Crusher's Ring, which will give you just three meters of movement speed. Super handy. The next one is Haste Helm, and this is temporary, which uh, I gotta move the text here. Haste Helm is going to give you momentum at the start of battle for three turns. That is 1.5 meters movement speed per turn remaining. So you will start the turn with 4.5 meters movement speed on turn one, and then three, then 1.5. So, here's how to get these, and yes, I have to shill another video. I'm sorry, but it has to be done. 
So what I'm going to have you watch next is this is a monk tank build guide. And the reason why is because technically I the way I'm doing my guides is for a full party guide and it's act one, two, and three. So each video will have its, you know, separate acts. But the point is, is that I've already covered how to get these items in this video. Again, you just go down to the description. You'll find it under character guides. So monk tank act one, go ahead and click that link. And then all you have to do is click the how to get haste helm at 1535 and how to get crusher's ring at 930. That will explain everything and save, you know, the watch time on this video. Next up is Luminous Armor, and you don't have to wear this if you don't want to. It's I wouldn't recommend wearing it in Act 1 on Honor Mode, but uh, what it does is uh, whenever you deal Radiant Damage, you cause a Radiant Shockwave. As far as Act 1 goes, you won't really be utilizing this hardly much at all for any reason. Uh, it's an okay armor to just put on. It's the same armor class as her starting armor. But again, this builds up into Act 2, and that's what this guide is. It's a three-parter, but here's how to get it. Starting at the Goblin Camp, I will show you how to get there. Now, if you don't know how to get to the Goblin Camp, it means you skipped ahead in the video and you didn't watch the other prerequisites, so I'm not going to go over that. But uh, from the Goblin Camp, and uh, I can't believe how slow this runs. Okay, there we go. We're speeding up. Speeding up movement. So from the Goblin Camp, go north into the main, uh, what is this, Shattered Sanctum. Continue going north. Uh, here is uh, True Soul Gut. You're going to go west from True Soul Gut. Over this way, there's a door. If you touch it, the NPCs get mad. Jump over the side here. Go through this door. You'll need a lockpick character or you just kill Tr True Soul Gut. Get her key. In here, there is an ogre to kill. This one's really crispy named Palma. Continue east around the bend here and then going north. And then there is a floor puzzle. And I, I have like eight videos where I explain this damn floor puzzle solution, but here you go. I'm going to post it on the screen for you. Uh, go ahead and feel free to pause the video if you want, but essentially what you want to do is make all the black circles on the southern part black and, and then all the white circles on the east, north, and uh, west sides here. So my camera's facing north. That means the southernmost circle is the one on bottom. Otherwise, if you have a lockpick character, you can skip all that nonsense and lockpick this lever, which will then open this door, and then you go down this ladder here, snake uh, eater style, long ladder. You'll be at the Cell Unite Outpost. Oh boy, this is the Underdark. So once you get in here, this door will be locked. You can uh, lockpick it, go ahead and pop it open, there you go. And then you'll need to make a perception check to open this door, I believe, I'm pretty sure. Once you're inside here, it will be in this opulent chest, and that is where you get the luminous armor. Alternatively, you can just jump up into the room from the ground, but you still need a lockpick character. This is also booby trap, but you can pick up the chest if you want, and then, you know, drop down here. But you really, really should have a lockpick and disarming character in, in all your parties, which um, my guides are designed for that. Next up is the Boots of Stormy Clamor. Now, these are from a vendor, but you have to do a quest to unlock this vendor. And from the Selenite Outpost, you're going to go west. Now, be careful when going west, because if you go up here, there will be a spectator fight, which is this big eyeball monster with teeth. But no, you're going to go down instead, and then you're going to run through all the explodies poison smoke. And then when you get down here, there will be a boulette fight. Oh boy, it's super scary, dude. Anyway, kill the boulette or scare it away or whatever. And oh, okay, lays the comet, that's fine. But we're going to continue going west. And I'm just gonna, you know, pass some turns here, let them get get all beat up because we don't care about our party members. I'm just making a video. And we're going to continue west along uh, the, these exploding uh, porch stocks. There we go. And can she flee from combat? Yes, she can. So, there we go. We fled from combat. Now, we don't have to deal with the bullet in turn-based mode. So, we are continuing west until we get to this part of the map here. And there will be turrets, so you will enter turn-based mode. Use a dash action, and then uh, just simply run between cover for the turrets. And there we go. It looks like I'm in range of this one, though. So. Uh, anyway, so you're going to dodge the turrets. Except I'm not. I'm just going to face tank them because why not? Oh no, they hurt so good. Anyway, we're going to continue west up into the main door here. Now, uh, you want to bring a lockpick character, which Lazel is unfortunately not. But you're going to jump through here, open this door, close it so you don't get shot by the turrets. You're going to jump down this little area here. 
into this next door. Go in, and you need to loot a few things. On the northern shelf is tin mask spores, so go ahead and grab one of those, or grab them all, might as well, since you're here. And then in the southeastern corner are tongues of madness. Once you've grabbed that, we can proceed to the next step, which is, uh, we're going to go to the Sully Knight outpost, and we're going to leave the outpost and go north. Now, to open this door, there will be a minotaur here that gets shot by turrets to disable the turrets. There's a crystal here you would shoot, and then to open the door, there's a lever right here. So we're going to now travel north to the Cellunite outpost, and I'm going to go under this way. And yes, this will be pretty chaotic, you know, because I have the game running super fast. Oh no, voices! Oh no, Lazelle's schiz schizo. She hears the voices, guys. Alright, we're going to blow up the explody mean fire plants. There we go. Run through the, the haze. Here's some mushroom people. They're cool. I'm going to tell them the truth of the parasite. They let me in their cool sweet town. There we go. We are in. We are in town. Awesome stuff. We're continuing north. We got the waypoint. Over here is a vendor named Blurg. We're going to talk to Blurg. And we're going to tell him about the Society of Brilliance. A mind flare infected me with a tadpole. To explain the whole story, then this guy pops out. Yes, absolutely. And uh, let him search your brain. There you go. Can you extract the tadpole? That doesn't sound ideal. Tell him about the Mind Flayer ship. Thanks for the info. Bypass, what kind of alchemy are we talking about? I think I already have what you're looking for. We just did the quest. And then you want your healer to drink the potion, but because this is a YouTube video, who cares? I'm just going to try to do the saving throw anyway. Looks like we did it. And no, uh, we failed it. Oh, well, it's fine. Anyway, just progress the dialogue. I have gold. Will that suit? He opens a menu. Here is the Boots of Stormy Clamor. So you definitely, definitely want this. Now this is cool because it's whenever you inflict a condition, it inflicts reverberation. We're going to have things that inflict condition later. And by the time we reach Act 2 and get our full set of gear, every time an enemy attacks us, they'll be inflicted with a condition. Every time they miss, they'll be inflicted with a condition. Every time we hit them, they'll be inflicted with a condition. Every time they get hit by one of our other armors that hits when they miss, they will be inflicted with a condition. Best in slot boots for the rest of the game. So get them from Omelum in the mind of... I'm sorry, the Myconid Colony. Yes. Next up is the Ever Seeing Eye, and you get this from the Hag's Workshop. So how to get there? Well, from the Goblin Camp, you would go south and then east to Blighted Village. And then from, if you've watched uh, my other videos, how to get Haste Helm and Crusher's Ring, you'll know how to get to Blighted Village. So from Blighted Village, you go south and across this water where there's a bunch of traps, go west a bit. And here's a waypoint to Riverside Tea House. Once you're at the old tea house, you go inside, and then there's a hag dungeon in here, which um, I don't know if I've done it on the save file. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see if the save file is uh, set up for the video. If not, I'll fix it. But anyway, we're going through the Hag Dungeon. What, here, I can just... Yeah, I clearly don't have it, otherwise it'd be a quit. Alright, we have the Gnarled Door, which um, we're just going to skip the dialogue. It does not matter what we say. You can try to intimidate the door to let you in. It looks like I got a nat 20 there. But normally you just walk through them. It doesn't matter what you, what, what you say. This room could be mildly problematic. And, uh, you know what? Why don't we try stealthing it? It'll be fun to stealth. Stealth Lazelle, not really recommended. But what are they gonna do about it? Yeah, let's just jump in front of them. That's- it's fine. It's fine, guys. Anyway, let's just, uh, you know, just jump over here and then leave. <laughs> and you're gonna make your way down the poisonous junk here. And yes, they are aggroing. They're doing their thing. Here we go. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to skip ahead a bit. Okay, so I did have a save file prepared for this. Anyway, so uh, the poison fumes on honor mode, you want to be real careful. You can throw junk into the poison fumes and cover the vents. That's boring, but on all other modes, if you have a cleric, just run through it. Who cares? Oh, no, poison and explosions. Oh, what's going to happen? Don't blow my ankles off, please. Anyway, so once you get through the poisonous, noxious fumes, you have the hag room. And uh, you can deal with the hag however you want. I'm just going to stealth to the room that's into the north side here. And this is, there's a wooden door. You go in. And then the ever-seeing eye is right here on the north table. So what is this thing and why are we getting it? Why do we care? All this does is early game. It gives Lazel, your fighter, a 
concentration. That's it. That's all we're doing this for. By the time we hit Act 2 around level 9 or 10, this becomes irrelevant, so you could totally skip this item if you want, but if you're not doing the hack dungeon for the permabuffs, you're doing something wrong, so you might as well pick it up while you're here. It's really good to ha This is really good to have for the early parts of Act 2, because it's just, uh, it's just a free uh, concentration, which really scales with Illithid powers and a few other things. Giant Breaker is probably best in slot for most of the game, and I'll explain why in a bit, but let me show you how to get it first. So, from Joaquin's Rest, you need to go east and then north, and there's a bunch of gnolls here, and you gotta rescue some Zinterim dudes that are doing a supply shipment. And, you know, I mean, for, for this crossbow, I would say just rescue them, you know, uh, because if you don't become friends with the Zinterim people, then you can't buy it. So then you go back to Joaquin's Rest Waypoint, and I'll show you how to get to the little secret hideout area here. You go north into the town. There was a, a fire here earlier, and by the way, Lazelle's a great firefighter because she can just jump to the second floor and solve the whole quest immediately. But uh, we're going to go west here, and uh, this dead halfling has a key on them, which I guess I didn't loot um, on this save file. But from here, there's a northwest door. This is normally blocked by crates. You go in. This guy... You should have the password if you save the Zintern people, otherwise you gotta mind read them. And uh, then you go down the hatch. Oh boy, and then there is a closet here in the north, like, west corner. With that key you looted from the dead gnome, it'll unlock. Here's the waypoint, you go in. Once you go in and you've rescued them, they will let you in their cool little That's camp. Far That's far enough, dude. Oh wait, you're cool, come here. So, once, once you're there, again, you can just go through here, it's fine. I'm just gonna be fancy and leap over like some kind of superwoman. Talk to Zeres, this chickola. There you go, let her flap her gums. And then we got a reward called Herald. We use that on a different character. And that's more of an in-game Asterian thing for Act 3, an Act 3 video. But anyway, you jump down here, there's Brim. And Brim's not really the nicest dude, but you want to trade with him. And he has the Giant Breaker for you to buy. Why do you want Giant Breaker? Why is it so good? Well, it's a heavy crossbow, so it's the hardest hitting heavy crossbow that Lazel is proficient with. It's also... Cre it, it, whenever you hit an, an opponent with this, it has a much higher percent chance to proc than Herald here. Herald here does something similar, but it's it's harder to proc. But Giant Giant Breaker almost always procs, so it makes the target reel for two turns. What is reeling? Okay, well reeling is they have a minus one chance to their attack rolls for every turn remaining. It stacks up to seven turns, I believe. Or five turns. I forget. I'm not going to look that up. I don't care. But the point is, is that it creates a condition. And remember, Lazelle can attack like up to four times a turn. Her ranged attacks can trip, knock back, disarm. So when you, again, when you create a condition, uh, they get reverberation. And uh, again, it's it's just nutty. It, it is a ranged option. You, you definitely want a ranged option that creates a condition when you attack someone. And Giant Breaker has the highest proc chance in the game out of all other ranged weapons that deal uh conditions so that's why you want this weapon the shining staver of skulls is a weapon that deals radiant damage which will proc all sorts of fun things with our build in act two but we will not be actually using this weapon in act one we will be using it much later when the build is finalized and when we hit act three or level 11 if we can get level 11 in act two then <laughs> that even better we will unlock the ultimate weapons for Lazel, or I'm sorry, for Minthara, because we're swapping her out, which will also have way more radiant damage. But this is a temporary, just to get you through Act 2 weapon. And to get it, you're going to go... Uh, wow, my map is weird. Anyway, you're going to go to the Underdark, and there's a beach right here. So remember, my Canid Colony is up top. Settle so Unite Outpost is bottom right. Just go to the beach. There's going to be a bunch of... Um, what are these dudes? Dre Dwegars. Go ahead and kill them, rough them up, or be their friend. I don't care. Play however you want. And there's a boat. There is an Underdark Dwegar boat. So you're going to board the boat. Aye, aye, Captain. By the way, I'm making uh, Skull and Bones content in February. Please subscribe for that. Sail into the darkness. Now, what you want to do is there's a Corsair Greymon guy, and he's going to jump on your boat. He thinks he's such a, you know, he thinks he's such a cool dude. Do not, do not push him into the water. Don't do option four. Otherwise, you can't get this. You can be his friend, or you can just kill him right here. I'm just going to attack. Get him, get him, fellas. Anyway, so here is Corsair Greymon. Uh, he is right here, and my game is bugged because I'm running it too fast. But uh, go ahead and kill this little dweeb and loot him, and he's got it on him. 
Anyway, this is what the weapon does. It's just, it just has radiant damage on it, so it procs our equipment later in Act 2. That's all. You just, it, it's just, a, it's just something you grab. You don't use it right now. Now I will explain the Holy Lance Helm, which is, it doesn't have much, too much use, but it's something that completes the build in Act 2, so we might as well grab it now, and, uh, here's how you get there. From Joaquin's Rest, or from the Goblin Camp, you follow the road west, where this is that Get the Yankee Patrol, which, um, should be cleared in this playthrough, but, uh, you're gonna cross the bridge and go to Act, what I call Act 1.5, the Get the Yankee Crash. Again, you can take this road down here, it it doesn't matter, and I don't want to make a custom marker. So I'm going to demonstrate that now for you if my camera can cooperate. And I can't even move my character, I'm bugged. Alright, we're moving, we're moving and grooving, here's the mountain pass. My camera's still bugged, so... We're going to just travel west here, across the bridge, and into the mountain pass. Wee. After all the sleepy cutscenes and stuff, you'll be right about here. You're going to travel north, and then there's a waypoint for you, and then you're going to curve around on the east side and continue along north, and continue along. If you pass a strength check, you can take this little, uh, whatever this is, this lift, the ski lift thing down here. Otherwise, you gotta walk th down the side of the mountain path, and there's a bunch of mines and traps and stuff. It's not a big deal, but once you're at the lift, continue east a bit, and there's a waypoint. So we're going to teleport to that waypoint now. From the waypoint, you're going to climb the knotted roots to the west, right west of the waypoint. <laughs> anyway, uh, then you're going to jump the gap, uh, continuing east. And I thought I cleared the cats in this save file. I get, I get, did I not? Clear? Oh, that's cobbles underneath. Okay, the cats are cleared. And my camera is just ruined here. Oh my goodness. Come on, fix yourself, game. Uh, so, you're, you're gonna jump this, there's, there's a, there's a breakable object here. You can use ranged attacks. And, uh, jump across! Then there's a bunch of magic cats in here, kill them with physical attacks, or don't, see what happens. <laughs> they, they start casting magic if you use magic. So, then you're going to continue east through these doors. And then there's another breakable little objects right here. Uh, to the north, so you're gonna break down those wooden barricades and then swing your camera around and climb the knotted roots. This will bring you up top. And there's some dickhead eagles here. Uh, if you're playing a goody two-shoes build, it is not roleplay friendly to kill them. So talk your way out of it. If, I don't know if you can. But uh, we're going to continue east here. And um, what you're going to do is normally you just kill the eagles and then jump from the top here. But uh, to save time, I'm just going to use Githyanki magical superpowers to jump really far. Which I don't think I can... Oh, there we go. Anyway, so you're going to uh, continue kind of southeast now. And I am so sorry for the janky camera. I am not doing that on purpose. But continuing east, there's another gap to jump here. There we go. And then there's a chest. And in the chest is the Holy Lance Helm, which my game is bugged, so I have to do this like the stupid way. But uh, essentially, uh, whenever someone misses you, they take 1 to 4 radiant damage, which is going to proc a whole lot of fun stuff later on. Absolute must-have item. But until you get the rest of the stuff in Act 2, feel free to continue to wear the Haste Helm. And then finally, there is the Blood of Lathander. Now, again, this one is a very complex item to get. There's a really quick and easy and simple way to do it that, like, none of the guides actually tell you for some reason. And I never understood that. I always like to do things in the game the easy, fast, and dumb, simple, stupid, you know, way. And here is how to do it. This video here, you know, doesn't even have a thousand views. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's called Baldur's Gate 3, the best way to get Blood of Lathander. It is a 10 minute video because I hold your hand the whole way through. And uh, again, just go to the description and it should be under tips and tricks. Uh, how to get blood. Easy way to get Blood of Lathander. Just click that link. There you go. And that's all the items you need. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll give you a kiss on your forehead. Mwah. If you're wondering when the next video will be out for the Act 2 stuff, it's going to be a little while. I've got a lot on my plate. I've got Pal World. I've got Albion. I've got Skull and Bones in February. I, I have the, I'm just a single guy. I don't have... I'm not single, but I'm just a guy. I don't have a dev team. I don't have editors. I don't have any help or friends. It's just me in a room going crazy over video games. Anyway, with that said, uh, <laughs> leave a comment. All right, better leave a nice one. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, leave whatever you want. You know, freedom of speech must be respected. Finally, 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 on the video, or uh, yes, on the video that you're watching right now. These stupid eagles. Anyway, <laughs> there's a video on the right side of your screen that you should absolutely click. And if you don't click it, then you're going to have a little bit more heartburn than you usually do after eating tacos or burritos or anything spicy.